Uh, so, you know, yeah. I think Upgroove would have a very good beer. It'd have to be a very fun oh, beer. I, it could it be, be an tart. IPA, though. I, see, I would think a sour beer would yeah. be perfect for Upgroove, because that's pretty much what we are, so sour. Two of the Upgroove podcast, Rob Rossi. Chris Pastrick. Where the hell is Jill? Yeah, that silence you hear means Jill Leonard is on her vacation. Did she take the week off? She took Penn the State entire went? damn week off to go to the beach are and we drink. Akron? Like she treats us like Akron now? <laughs> That's all we are. Uh, yeah, she's down in, uh, what, Ocean City guzzling it up at the beach. And yeah. here we are working at the office. Yeah. So it's good, good, good. Good decision by uh, Jill to go to the beach right this time of year. After, <laughs> after like the beaches have just been savaged right. for the past five So days. Irma's gonna probably yeah. hit her, um, and certainly not playing light on Irma, whatever. No, but if it's but, gonna uh, hit anybody, we hope it's Jill. Oh, I don't hope it. I don't think that at all. That's oh. Jill. That's just him. By the no, way, no, no. I'm just uh, saying. You know, <laughs> if she's on vacation, we have to work. Well, I don't so. understand why does somebody go to a beach in the middle of hurricane season. Well, probably because Jill just wants to sit around and drink, and this gives well, her Well, that's food. true. But she could do that anywhere, really. And she does. Well, <laughs> I don't know. It's just one of those things that I just don't understand. Yeah, well, I, there's a lot of those. Speaking of things we don't understand and drinking, can I ask a question? And forgive my ignorance, but so Oktoberfest is not in October, really. No, no. it is not. It is not. It is. So it was originally celebrated in... Oh, man. You know what? I should probably look this up. Like sometime in 1810, yeah. there was a big wedding in, in Munich or somewhere around there. And there was like a six day festival of this prince and this princess got married and they had this big festival. Well, everybody loved it so much because, wow, well, why wouldn't you? I mean, six days of drinking. It sounds right. like a great idea. So they no kept, cookie table at this wedding. I don't believe so. So they kept they kept having it year after year. And actually, they kept moving it up because the weather was like oh last weekend was a great weekend it was the weather was nice so let's let's have it one day earlier and one weekend earlier and one weekend earlier and the next thing you know it's in september and i never knew it was to take september. advantage of yeah so to take advantage of the nicer fall weather so that you could drink outside i guess um and so that's what's happening so it's now in september so it kind of makes no sense but they still call it oktoberfest right and there's a ton of them in Pittsburgh. There are a ton. Pittsburgh is like ninth. They ranked ninth. Like Wallenberg did this study. Yeah. They looked at all these different okay. things like how ninth. many Oktoberfests you have and, and what your cost of your sausage is. And my sausage eight, is eight. magnificently priced. Oh, my. Well, um, God, or I wish you were At least fairly here. priced. <laughs> <laughs> so, but they looked at all of these factors, 23 factors, and we are... 23 factors? 23 of factors. And they determined that Pittsburgh ranks ninth in the U.S. for best place to celebrate Oktoberfest. I gotta be honest, if you can get past four factors of an Oktoberfest, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, beer, 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 and beer. Yeah. Um, well, you gotta have food in there somewhere. But uh, yeah, Cincinnati, those bastards in Cincinnati were number one. So hmm, Interesting. I wonder if that's because those Cincinnati connects to Kentucky. Hmm. And there, it's almost like you can sort of combine the two states. Maybe. So, or they know. just have nothing going on. Maybe they have They're nothing else going. Away, drinking away Bengals misery over the years. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, that's so that's the story behind October. I don't know. I so just, there is a card up on upgroup.com. Yeah, there check is. this out, and it'll be up throughout Oktoberfest wherever. However, the end of this last. month, yeah. So Oktoberfest is over in September, pretty much, and fall beers will be done by uh, the end of October, maybe. Because then it's, you know, well, after... Winter beers are like, by November, they're doing like holiday beers. Oh, absolutely. And it's crazy. You're, you're into the, the beer more than I am. I'm not a craft a, beer. I like craft beer. Yeah, yeah so like I do. You, you have a, a better idea than me. Like, when do these come out? Like, there are very few, like, ones that I go, oh, well, I, like I don't, them. you know what? I don't, I'm not so avid that I, I have a calendar yeah. and I check it off. But so like, I the don't Pumpkin King is out now. Pumpkin King, yes. Southern is Tier is a Pumpkin King. Yes. Uh, they're actually, they're actually having not really an Oktoberfest, but they're celebrating. Right. They're taking people up to New York. But yeah, some of these are out now. Those and, pumpkin uh, beers are pretty much out. Yeah. And I think the Christmas beers start coming out. In I want to say late October, late early October. November. So what um, comes out in Christmas? Like Valentine's Day shots of beer? Like, <laughs> I mean, I like, I mean, I, I feel like 
we just keep moving it up and we're eventually going to run into a month that's like, we have nothing to celebrate. There's nothing coming up. We've jumped the gun on everything. Well, there's always something to celebrate. That's always. True. But like in our world, we're celebrating like St. Pat. We should be drinking green beer on Valentine's Day because technically that's when we should be celebrating the St. Patrick's Day beers. True. I mean, you always want to I don't understand why we can't just drink the beers when they come out. Like, well, but you got to, but, uh, but people got to make their money. You know, you got to celebrate Valentine's Day. You got to sell it in January in order to make all your money. Well, as, a, a, big as money a journalist, crowd. I can just say that's a foreign concept to me making money. And I, <laughs> yes, we I don't, don't, I don't, we don't understand this. Yes. <laughs> yes. I don't understand this commerce just thing. Keep, man. Making. Anyway, we should get an Upgroove beer. I would, I wanted an Upgroove yeah, beer. I think, you know, you do you know people in the I beer I do know business? people. But, you know, a lot of people I know don't like me. Oh, well. There's Which I do understand. That's for a different podcast. We want the we want the beer to be good. Uh, so, you know, yeah. I think Upgroove would have a very good beer. It'd have to be a very fun I beer. So. I, it could it be, be an tart. IPA though. I, see, I would think a sour beer would yeah. be perfect for Upgroove because that's pretty much what we are. So sour. So Oktoberfest or in September? We don't. Uh, we we now understand that, but it right. was something that confounded us. Um, I got another thing that confounds me, and it 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 dates to several years ago. Chris, I was covering. Uh, one of the uh, teams in town. This is when I was a columnist, so I'm not giving too much away. When I was a columnist for the trip, I covered all the teams. Um, mm-hmm. And one day, I happened to have somebody, uh, a, a reader, I guess, on Twitter, send me a direct message saying, uh, you might want to check out so-and-so's uh, Twitter feed. So I do, and this person's Twitter feed, an employee of the team. Okay. So, you know, a player or a coach or a member. We're not saying, but yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a uh, a porn site that has a Twitter feed, and this, this employee has liked it. Oh. So, but with the well, person's well, official <laughs> account. Not like, like okay. a, lot of, a lot of times, like for Le'Veon Bell... Or somebody like that. This wasn't Levy. This wasn't Levy on Bell. But I'm giving an example. Like Levy on Bell uses his verified account as his account. Okay. All right. There are some people personally. Right. Okay. There are some people who like they have their account. Sure. It's verified, and they have like another account. It's like a work phone and a regular phone. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. But this person was using their verified account. To and like porn. To like porn. And well, I don't, I suspect that this person had multiple. Most accounts. of us like porn. I mean, you know. Right. But most of us aren't an employee of a team who leaves it up there. So uh, I take this to a person who works for the team and they went, well, that's not good. <laughs> and I said, you mean the porn or the fact that the person liked it? He goes, oh, both? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm not going to judge the quality. But. But I bring this up because Ted Cruz yes. is in the uh, He likes some news porn today. Well, yes. you know, and I, I certainly don't begrudge anybody for liking porn, although when it's Ted Cruz, it becomes very uncomfortable. Right. <laughs> I feel like this might just be him trying to get the, uh, um, the Donald Trump voters who were okay with certain things Donald Trump said. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yes, I can so, understand that. Um, you know, it's got to be really hard for people like that, though. And I, for famous which, people. Which people? No, for famous people. People oh, yeah. like whether you're a politician, whether you're a, a recording star, a rock star, you really can't. You, you lose a lot of that freedom that, you know, like I'm free to like porn all I want and nobody knows. Let's not get into that. But. <laughs> but, no, but, let's delve what into I'm saying, No, let's not. But Have what I'm saying man, is... How many years? No, 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 let's go. But but for somebody who's famous, right. it becomes much more difficult to do because people will find out and we'll, we'll see and, you know, because nobody gives a crap about people like us. But at the same... But for those people who are famous... True. But if you're Ted Cruz, why are you looking... <laughs> to like porn oh, on I Twitter. Thought you, why are you looking at no, porn? No, 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 no. Uh, I understand that. I'm saying if you're Ted Cruz and you really want to like go find porn, take your iMachine, buy one that's just yours, just for like... Well, and he's got to have a staff that could get it. Right, like you don't need it. to be like... Like to like something on Twitter. Like you can accidentally like something that you don't realize was vulgar because it was hidden, right? Or, right. Or like you... You know, we've seen this. People will share something, and it turns out the person that that made the content is like really unseemly, and right. you don't realize it because you're just sharing the content. But to like something on Twitter, you generally have to have it in your feed, right? Or have somebody in your feed share it, 
or be looking for it. Now, I you're right. In any one of those scenarios, you're kind of busted. Right. So, I would not use Twitter to look for something like porn. Right. Like there are other ways to look for porn. It's called the internet. You don't need <laughs> you don't need the Twitter, right? Right. Well, who looks up porn on Twitter anyway? That's what I'm saying. It's gotta like, be like, only Ted Cruz would be like, oh, let's get on the Twitter. Or forget. God damn it, that guy can't even do porn right. right. And this goes back to something I've said about uh, people that run for president in this country. And this isn't like a political statement. This is just a a, a human statement, right? I think people that run for president, whether you think they're monstrous or idiots or whatever, deserve a lot of credit because who would want that job? Oh, my God. No. Like, I think we're actually seeing somebody who, like, thought it was going to be a great job and went, like, no, this or, sucks. Or really didn't want it to right, begin right, with right. and got busted. But, and, but yeah, it's like, I, yeah. like, just look at the presidents when they're done. They all look terrible. Oh, horrible. You know, and, like, now you're horrible. running for president again the minute you win, and it's like, so it's a constant. Well, some are, right. but, yeah, but, I know what you mean. But... You give up a lot of privacy to become the president oh. of the United States. and But the thing about it is, even at the level of Ted Cruz, who's a United States senator, I just think we are to the point now where we need people who understand technology at a better level. Because if you're using Twitter to search for porn, you really don't get social media. Well, or the, even the internet. I mean, you right. don't get a lot of things because, like, yeah. That's scary. It's like, it, it blows Although, my mind. I cannot comprehend, Chris, how we have leaders in our country who fundamentally don't understand the basics of technology. And I say this as somebody who had a meme describe, like explained to him the other day. But I'm not in charge of, like, important decisions. Yeah. So it's just weird to me to think, like... Well, to be fair to Ted Cruz, and I... <sighs> okay. Yeah. But to be fair to Ted Cruz, we don't know whether that his... Was he hacked? Was it, an, uh, was it a staffer? Was it a staffer? Did he like it? You know, I mean, I don't know. I feel like that's the easiest thing to say. Oh, it was, I was hacked, or it was a staffer. Well, right. Like, if and I'm Ted the... Cruz, I'd be like, look, I was looking up porn. Like, hey, you know what? I don't know which is I've creepier, seen. though, you know? I just uh, think, like, lean into it at this point. Like, it actually might humanize him in a way. Uh, I mean, it doesn't take much to humanize Ted. I don't know. I mean, that's... Uh, and you know what, though? And it's not really... It wasn't a really good one, either. It wasn't a very good good, uh, good, wow. good post that he did. Whatever he found was not really that Shouldn't great. he be more worried about, like, helping Houston clean up? I would think so. You know, I like, would who think has so. time for porn in Houston right now? You you would think that he doesn't have time for this, but you know yes. what? A little respite. You know what? He was on an Oktoberfest and just was like, <laughs> you know, a little too I'm, much. I'm nine deep into my Upgroove <laughs> beer, and uh, so this is the Upgroove Podcast, season two, episode two. Uh, Jill Leonard, our uh, fellow Upgroovian, um, she's on a beach somewhere I, looking up. I gotta life. say, I'm quite sad that she's not here. I it too. feels it feels empty. It feels weird. That she's not here? It does. And it feels especially uh, sorrowful to me because I know how much she contributes to our film conversations. Absolutely. Being the, being the um, movie uh, connoisseur that well, she is. I'm actually very curious because the last time she was actually going to see a movie in the movie theater. Right. Which was a we very rare shocked. occasion. Yeah. Uh, and so I, would, I was very curious to hear what her yeah. experience was like. Well, because we don't think she's been into a movie theater. Right. I was they curious started to showing see. movies with sound. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, do you think she's seen a Star Wars? I'm going to say no. no. I'm yeah. going to say no. I don't think she's a Star Wars person. I, I find it hard to believe there are people under the age of 40 who haven't seen a Star Wars. I just, yeah, I agree. But, you know, it's, it amazes me to, to, to know that there are people who don't like Star Wars. But then again, I, you know, I love it so much. Did you, uh, were you a fan of that 70s show? Yes. So when Eric yes. Foreman always would refer to Star Wars, I used to love it when his dad would be like, enough with the Star, Star Wars. Wars. <laughs> but, um, but their Star Wars, is, it's been a weird time in Star Wars because they've been firing directors like nobody's business. I don't business. understand that at all. I mean, they fired the, the directors of, uh, of the Han Solo standalone because the movie ended up being too funny, I guess, what yes. Kathleen Kennedy thought it was yes. too humorous. But these guys are, I mean, they, they weren't they, the Lego movie people. Right. And, and you know what you're getting when you when you hire that kind of thing. It's not I like fired I fired them for not making the movie out of Lego people. 
Well, I mean, that, that to me is the <laughs> That was probably offense. a bad like, direction to go in. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not like a draft pick. Like, when you hire, when you get a draft pick, you, you, Kind of, you kind of know, but you kind of don't no, you're, know. You're, you're betting on it. You're hoping, kid, right. but you don't really know. But when you hire someone like a coach or like a director or whatever, you know what you're getting. So you shouldn't be surprised when you end up getting that very thing. Right. So we um, we we had it on Upgroove uh, earlier in the week. J.J. Uh, Abrams, who was the yes. director of The Force Awakens, which right. I think is epi- what episode and is that's that? That's seven. Seven. Okay. okay. So now he's coming back for episode nine. Right. Because the original director, well, the, the first director that they picked is, is, is gone. gone. Right. So there's so, a different director for the one that's coming out in December, which I think, which one is that? Is that The Last Jedi? This I is the last Jedi so coming that's, out in December. That's directed by somebody. And that's else. done, and it's that's directed. Done. Yes. And it's so JJ is going to like finish the. What do we call these? Are they the, the sequels? The, 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 the C, C final people? trilogy, I guess. Yeah. If Until you they come up with another anything. one, right? All right. So, but well, and then by the way, just to finish up on the on the Han Solo movie, Ron Howard. Ron Howard is, picked up yes. the torch, which. Right. I gotta say that is a little unsettling. I like Ron Howard a lot. Don't get me wrong. I think he's a great you director mean, because he casted Henry it's... Winkler as. the... <laughs> It's the old Han Solo. Solo. Hey. Hey. No, but it was weird to me because Ron Howard, to me, maybe just because of the Happy Days thing and the whole. No, but he's done a lot of really he good has, movies. Well, he has, but his movies are sure, to me a little movies. bit lighter. Yes, yeah. he's a big budget guy, yeah. lighter, backdraft. Gung right. Ho. Uh, I'm naming his bad ones here, but um, well, isn't. Isn't the Han Solo movie supposed to be sort of uh, big? Yeah, it's supposed to be humongous. Yeah. Um, and I, but I suppose, I mean, he does bring a comedic sensibility. So if they had started with the comedy, right. maybe he was able to or maybe throw they just in needed some... somebody who was experienced enough to be able to go in there and get it finished. But they I were in the middle of it. Yes, right? I don't know. Ron just seems like a name. I don't know. I want to say dated. Like to me, mm-hmm. these movies should be pushing the boundary of of future so i think that's why they fired the people well because they maybe so let yeah. me ask a question though uh i'm rob rossi i'm uh, chris pastor yeah and we're this is the upgroof podcast season two we're talking about things that um puzzle us confuse us confound us this week and so i don't i get confused i'm from a sports background you you come from more of a theatrical mm-hmm. experience what does a director do well, a director. I mean, it, well, I think a director does different things in different media. Okay. I mean, you know, in a play, a director on stage, you know, tells the actors where to move. Right. And he gives them motivation, and he does. He's that. literally directing. He literally moves right. them, and 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 he directs where the audience's vision. Yeah, I assume be on a big budget movie, it's a lot like a head football coach in that most head football coaches, like Mike Tomlin, are. They're almost like CEOs. They get to make the final call, right. but they're empowering a lot of people to do more of the technical stuff. Right. Is well, that... they're dependent on a lot of people, right. and I think, but I do think that's probably the same way it is in movies. I mean, now a director, I think, also helps give motivation to his actors, and and he will. Um, I think he picks the shots and yeah. he does this, but then you're reliant on a lot of people, like the cinematographer and the sound guys, and the... so a cinematographer does what? Uh, sets up the shot. Okay. Um, you know, says, hey, you know, if the director says, I want a shot coming into this room, the cinematographer says, this is how we need okay. to come into And there's, the like, editors who edit it. Right. Like, so the editor, so the director's kind of overseeing a lot. Like, right. All, it's like a, it's, all the he's the director of the vision right. of the whole project. Now, directors so. don't always write, correct? Oh, no. No. Like, so J.J. Abrams is co-writing this episode Number nine. nine. Okay. And he co-wrote... Force Awakens. Force Awakens. And I guess I assumed, and again, because I didn't know this until reading it, um, in the upgroove card, I didn't realize that J.J. Abrams did not um, uh, write like the whole seven, eight, and nine story, and then people came in. I just assumed that was well, what right. he did. Well, so, so they're all writing something. So George, when George did the original, of course, you know, and you people can say what they want, like, oh, George had this grand vision of yeah. nine movies. If he did, Bullshit. why he did not? Make out he made a movie. He wanted yeah. to make one single film, yeah. and he. He probably did what most, well, in fact, actors do this and directors will do this. You'll write a, a, a backstory just to kind of help right. your characters feel more real. So he probably did write a backstory real quickly about origins of Anakin and all this stuff. But I don't think he knew that Darth Vader was Luke's father. Yeah. I don't think he had planned all that stuff. So 
but but eventually he did write the first three. He wrote a, a storyline yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, I agree. I would think that J.J. Abrams would say, okay, here's where we're going to take the next three movies. This is the arc. And then each person can I guess I just, get there in I their own way. I can't understand why you would hire a director and then need to fire the director. Because it implies that you really didn't interview for the director well. I agree. It seems I like, agree. I mean, it's Again. not like sports where maybe things get out of your control and you have to fire a person you like. Like, it seems like a director has much more control. Well, over. although there is always the idea of, I mean, you can hire, like, a, a player. You can get a player and maybe they don't perform the way that they were supposed well, right. to. I mean, that happens. Right. And maybe the same way with, with actors and directors. I mean, you, you hire who you think you're getting, yeah, but they, then they, they just go off the rails and they come up with something. Do you think you they're want. just hiring people while drunk at Star Wars? Maybe they maybe. are. I mean, they've got enough money. They're drinking all the all the time, I imagine. Maybe it's a marketing campaign. Maybe it's cocaine. There's a lot of drugs in Hollywood. I think that's episode 10. <laughs> In a galaxy much closer to ours. <laughs> so, all right. Well, this has been the Upgroove Podcast. Season it's been two episodes. It's felt really. It's like it's like the last few episodes of Laverne and Shirley. If you've ever watched that, with it just just Laverne yes. was missing Shirley. Right. I'm feeling we're missing our Shirley. So this has been the Upgroove Podcast. Maybe. Yes. Yes. Our Oove is missing. <laughs> our Oove is missing. Shamil. Well, Stella will get her Oove back next week. Another movie reference that Joe would. <laughs> Joe would never get. All right. Joe's back next week. I'm Rob Rossi. I'm Chris Pastry. We'll talk to you. The Upgroove Podcast was recorded at Trib Total Media Studios in Pittsburgh.